Good morning. Is my mic working? Yes, I hear myself. Do you sometimes have these moments that you think, ah, this is bad timing. This is really going wrong. Yes, I had that 15 minutes ago, hooking up my PC, and then suddenly there was this blue screen. What to do? Talking for one hour without slides? Well, I can do it, but if it's entertaining enough, I don't know. It's good to have some supporting slides. But fortunately, yesterday, I was traveling in the Netherlands. Fortunately, I was working on my P PowerPoint, and uh, I sent it to my Hotmail account. So we could download it from my Hotmail account. That's why now the slides are on screen. Uh, so welcome to this, uh, I think, first uh, session after the, the keynote. Let me introduce myself. My name is Frank Tijhuis. My funny accent uh, is because uh, I'm uh, originally from the Netherlands, but I'm living in, in Norway. Um, my role is I'm managing the International SAM Institute, which is a, a member of the Crayon company. Uh, and in that role, I, uh, I deliver training and manage training, and we deliver training across the globe. Uh, all related to IT asset management. What I would like to do today in this presentation is go uh, with you through IT asset management. Then just uh, to see what's, what kind of meat is in the room. Who is familiar with IT asset management? Okay, okay, good. Uh, so explaining and, and, and presenting why IT asset management becomes more important in this uh, digitizing, uh, uh, digitizing world. When I uh, prepared for this presentation, I thought, okay, what, what, what makes sense to present? Because it's a very broad topic, and I'm originally also a sales guy, so you always need to think, what are the needs uh, in the audience? Um, so I went through, uh, I went online, I did some research, and thought, okay, what is actually, what are the topics, the hot topics in IT? And specifically, what are the hot topics for the audience that came to this uh, 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 NICA conference? And I put a few slides on that. And, and one of them is, everything is becoming so complex there are always layers of technology added. It's not that we're all moving to the cloud, it's just an additional technology. Um, and I think the keynote uh, uh, addressed the changes in our society as well. And we need to deal with that. The other thing is the agenda for today. I went online, checked the agenda of this conference, and I just picked out a few of the topics challenges to stay secure in the era of digital business, moving to proactive security, why and how, stairway to heaven. For the older people in the room, that was a song Led Zeppelin once played. Uh, how to approach the clouds, digital transformation, how are you managing the world of change? And it becomes more and more clear that in order to make informed decisions, decide if you want to join these waves of technology. Does it make sense for the business? What are the costs associated to it? The risks associated to it? You need to be informed. And of course, every presentation you need to refer to Gartner. And these are the top 10 priorities that uh, uh, Gartner sees for CIOs in 2016. Uh, and I'm not going to go through everyone, but I just want to make the point that in order for organizations to understand and decide if they want to move into these priorities, track the cost, see if there's any ROI to it. Are they on track? Does it make sense to continue? You need to have good information. One thing is very interesting that um, Today, and again, Gartner data, that 38% of IT spent is uh, bypassing IT procurement within an organization. 
And that's quite amazing. Um, shadow IT is one of the things that relate to that. But I think it was a few years ago that already uh, was predicted that uh, in a few years from now, and we're actually there, that marketing would spend much more, would spend more money on IT than regular IT. And it's very easy. There's the cloud. There are web services. Marketing and the business, they want to move fast. They see something, they hear something, they go to a website, they click, they give their credit card, and they have a web service running. Great for the business. But there's also a big risk in it. First, you enter new technology in your organization. Cloud technology, but it can also be software that's still running on-premise. Uh, so the cost control beca becomes much more difficult. But there's also a, a risk. What kind of uh, software is running in your organization? What's the, what's the, where does it originate from? It could be malware. Ever heard of ransomware? Interesting topic. Um, you download software and you get a friendly email that you say, okay, if you want now to get your data back, please uh, transfer some money to this account and we'll release your data again. I do this very simply. But there are big risks. A risk from a security perspective, cost out of control. So there needs to be a way, ideally, for organizations to get back in control. Leadership's concerns. This is the executive and, and sales track. Just a few examples, questions that executives might ask, or they wake up during the night and say, hey, where are my employees working? Do they have the right tools? Can I outsource to the cloud? Save money? Protect my data? You see the, the rulings. Uh, Safe Harbor was going down the drain. There is now a new agreement with the US, if you follow the news. Skepticism there. So there's a lot of things to do with data protection and privacy. Um, how do I control what technology my employees are bringing into my organization? And does it support the business? Is it secure? And in the end, we need to be innovative. Innovative. Uh, business is changing rapidly. You see new business model uh, uh, emerging due to uh, IT the abilities that IT provides. In other words, IT as an enabler or supporting the business, now the business is much more equal to IT. Think about Uber, think about uh, the uh, B uh, Airbnb. New business models. And in fact, every organization with new technology now emerging, the Internet of Things, every organization should think but what does this all mean for my business? Maybe I need to transform my business in the years to come. What if the products that I deliver to the market, if they all would be, uh, uh, if they all would have a little chip so I can track them, it, it could really be disruptive for the business models. So IT asset management becomes more important. And the what IT asset management does, it's tracking assets from a contractual, financial, and inventory perspective. Sometimes when I deliver a training and I talk about IT asset management, people think that IT asset management is running around with screwdrivers and replacing hard disks. Uh, that's not the point. That is uh, for the physical work. This is contractual, financial, and inventory. And you could say, IT asset management it consists of out of software asset management and hardware asset management and there's a lot to do about software asset management I think that proper software asset management can only be done if you take into account your hardware assets as well think about where software is running these days it can be in the cloud it can be on-premise it can be in a public cloud private cloud uh, mobile phones mobile phones contain a lot of software data and all the risks that come to it. So in order to make informed decisions, strategic decisions on IT, you need to take both software and hardware assets into account. So the formal definition uh, on the screen, you can read for yourself, but I would like to point out that it 
has to do with the full life cycle. Even before you acquire assets, item uh, comes in the inside, and even if the asset already left your organization, disposed of, disposed of IT assets still need to be checked because organizations are responsible. I read an article two days ago that in the US, uh, old old type of uh, screens are piled up in um, in in, uh, in storage, uh, and no one knows what to do with it actually because the the, the screens contain uh, large amounts of lead, environmental pollution, part of IT asset management, disposal management. <coughs> so, organizations that want to um, make an effort of IT asset management, and I'll talk about the benefits uh, a bit later, uh, should understand that IT asset management is something that you start and you need to continue continuous improvement it's it's not just a product that you a project that you do and think okay i need to do it asset management let's spend half a year of it now we are done it's continuous improvement and you're never done actually so for people in the room that consider to have a career in it asset management you're in business for at least the coming uh, 10 20 years uh, who is part of it who is involved what are the stakeholders and that makes it quite difficult. It goes across the organization. And in fact, every employee in an organization that touches an asset, uses software, uses hardware, is part of the IT uh, uh, prog item program. So any organization should have an IT asset management program. And even if you're not aware, organizations are doing it, but probably not yet in a consistent and coordinated way. So what kind of benefits relate to IT asset management? Well, first, financial benefits. If you track your assets, if you understand what assets you have, you understand much better what are the financial uh, dynamics related to that asset. So you're able to, to do better ROI calculations. You understand what is the total cost of ownership that comes with an asset? When we work with organizations, we see they have difficulties with chargeback mechanisms or charging back the usage of software and hardware to departments or business units. You are, you are uh, doing like this. Do you want to share it with the audience? <laughs> no. <laughs> but it is, it, it is a topic which is very complicated. Uh, but important to, to make people in an organization more cost aware. And it's becoming more complex because it's hardware, it's software. It can be, of course, the costs of management, but also cloud services. How do you relate the costs of a cloud service? How do you charge it back? Services cost uh, modeling. Um, accuracy. What do I have? How do I depreciate my assets um, and IT uh, budgeting? So financial important uh, benefit, get in control, understand what are the costs related to my assets. Uh, risk and risk, when we're talking software asset management, we're often talking about risk from a compliance perspective. The number of audits, software vendors, the number of audits that software vendors perform and conduct in the last years has exploded. It, 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 in the last five years, I think, for the major software vendors like IBM and, and uh, Oracle and Microsoft, it almost tripled. Um, and uh, it's, it's good money for these uh, software vendors. So compliance is an important thing from a financial perspective, understand what software you, you need to support your business. Uh, don't, don't buy too much, don't buy too less. But compliance is, goes further than just being compliant from a license perspective. Think about environmental. Uh, my PC, um, I don't know where he left it, it's still, uh, on the, yeah, it's still standing there with the blue screen. 
I hope I get a new one now. But there's a battery in it. Um, there's a battery in it. There is uh, data on it. But f specifically for the, ba the, 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 the battery, you can't just throw it in the Oslo field. You need to have a, a chain of custody to dispose of assets in a secure, environmental, responsible uh, way. So compliance is not just am I using software illegally, but am I also compliant with regulations when it comes to environmental uh, stuff and data security and privacy and such. Damaged reputation. Damaged reputation if you are not compliant. It might ex give exposure outside of your organizations. But I also noticed that within an organization, your damage, your 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 uh, your your reputation might be damaged. What if you work for a big customer for a big organization and you're an employee there, and every year you need to sign your code of conduct and that you will not uh, uh, download uh, software on your PC and and such. But you also notice that your own organization is where you work for is not really compliant, and that's also damaged reputation. So the risk. Um, I was yesterday in the Netherlands, and uh, we, we were talking about a, a, a large organization. They still had 30% of their desktops running on Windows XP. And I was quite, uh, I was quite surprised. Uh, Microsoft doesn't provide any updates on uh, Windows XP anymore. So these PCs are very vulnerable for uh, security threats. Um, Big, 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 big risk. There is a correlation um, between uh, uh, yeah, bad practices on software asset management and cybersecurity. The number of cyber attacks, it is amazing. It's, uh, yesterday I read an article, I think it was hundreds of thousands in a, in a month that, that attack <coughs> um, uh, companies through, try to attack companies for cybersecurity. And ask your ask within your organizations how often do are we attacked from a cyber security perspective? And if the answer is well, hardly, <laughs> then you must be really scared. Uh, so risk, financial risk, but also the risk that relates to your daily IT operations. Uh, efficiency, so financial risk efficiency. These are the benefits that come with IT asset management uh, as enablers. Um, IT asset standards. What standards do we allow? How do we deal with the with uh, the non-standards? Uh, repeatable processes. Be more efficient, uh, like uh, order fulfillment, uh, software acquisition uh, 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 processes, and such. Clear definition of roles and responsibilities when it comes to IT assets. Um, faster order order fulfillment. Technology. Uh, uh, acceleration, acceleration of technology deployment, which supports the business, uh, and reuse of IT assets, which can also be, of course, a benefit on the financial uh, side. So if you look at uh, these categories of benefits, if you also think about the priorities that the CIOs have, that um, the audience here has, given the agenda that was uh, built, there is a need for information. Uh, information that is needed to identify your risk and act on it. Uh, understand your costs and reduce them. Improve efficiency. And understand where you can improve efficiency. So data is important. So organizations that want to start with IT asset management, there is a clear need for a robu robust uh, data backbone in the organization that can provide information to be successful in these areas. Now it becomes more complex. I already mentioned IT asset management goes across the organization. That's why, for instance, if we focus on software asset management, that's, that's one of the reasons why a lot of organizations struggle with maturing their, their software asset management practices. Who wants to be responsible? Who, who can be responsible? Um, 
sometimes it's, it's not perceived as a sexy topic, software asset management, which I don't understand. <laughs> and I, I shared it with, uh, but I need, to, I need to make it a bit personal now. People sometimes ask me, Frank, how did you end up in software asset management? And I remember I was about, I think I was 17 years old and I was about to finish high school. And I remember I came home one, uh, one afternoon and my mother was, was there and said, Frank, do you want tea? I said, yes. So we sat down at the kitchen table and my mother, she looked very serious. And she asked me, Frank, you're about to finish your high school and I think it's time that we, we talk a bit about your future. I said, yeah. And they said, Frank, what, are you, what do you want to be later? What do you want to do with your life? And I, I get a little bit emotional when I think about it. But I said, Mommy, I want to be a software asset manager. <laughs> and, then, and then she hugged me. And she was very proud of me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know actually how I got here. <laughs> but now I, now I am into IT asset management. I think it's a really interesting topic. Why? Because it's in the center of an organization. It touches every department, every business unit. So within IT asset management, you're a spider in the web. So IT asset management, take an average organization, they have these departments and business units. I mentioned we provide training out of the International SAM Institute. And we adopted a framework which, uh, uh, which originates from the International Association of IT Asset Managers, IATM. And IATM, they started 13 years ago. They came up with this framework which consists out of 12 so-called key process areas. And they're around the departments and the organization here. And an organization that wants to be successful and wants to mature their IT asset management practices, they need to get their act together in these key process areas. And this is not a training, but just to give you an understanding. Uh, one of the key process areas an organization should work on is acquisition management. You could say that's the, that's the gatekeeper KPA for an organization. What it does, it, it ensures that only assets come into your organization that the organization needs. I just mentioned at the beginning, 38% of IT spend goes beyond or goes around IT procurement. So acquisition management, what's in there is you need to define standards. First, it starts with the business. What kind of business are we in? What is the goal? What's the mission, vision for the business? What is our charter for the years to come? And then an organization needs to decide, okay, what IT capabilities do we need to support our business and make our business successful? And if you have these discussions in an organization, you can say, okay, these are the standards that we allow. Do we allow bring your own device? Still, you need to ha have standards. You just you can't say just bring everything. You need to have certain regulations. So how to deal, how to get to standards um, on hardware, on software, how to get to an approved software vendor list, how to reduce the number of software titles in your organization, which obviously can, can save uh, costs and can reduce testing and such, make, you make your organization more efficient. But once assets get into your organization, you need to identify them, asset identification management. And for hardware, or a printer, or a router, or a, a server, or a piece of software, or a cloud service, the way you identify them is obviously different, depending on the type of asset. But if you identify your assets, it allows you, for instance, that's the other KPA, to track your assets. What are the real costs associated to that asset? What is the total cost of ownership? And if you get a better understanding on what the costs are and how assets perform in your organization, you can do a better job in vendor management. Introduce key KPIs, key 
performance indicators on vendor management. And if you track your assets in a good way, it's easier to be compliant. And once assets get into your organization, you already need to prepare for disposition management. When do you expect that assets will leave your organization? And how can it be done in a secure way? How can I make sure that if an employee leaves my organization, that his mobile phone is erased, the data is taken off, the apps are taken off or reused? Very complex uh, area. Acquisition, disposition, identification, documentation of the stuff that relates to the assets. And one of the things that uh, we often see is that organizations struggle with maintaining their software asset management or maturing it. It has to do with policy management. What is allowed and how do I enforce my policies? HR, the legal department, there are important stakeholders to enforce policies. But if you, uh, if you have policies in place, you need to communicate and educate your employees. That's another thing. Ask for your, you don't have to answer in public, public but did you sign a, an agreement with your employer how to use software, what you are allowed to do or not? Often they have policies. A lot of organizations do have policies, but they're very well, these are very well kept secrets. They're not communicated. You need to inform the stakeholders that there are policies. So I touch them, them both, and in fact, what is needed for a successful IT asset management program is that you need to take into account your full organization, and you need to take into account these 12 so-called key process areas. And then you need to define what processes do I need, what policies do I need, procedures, and how do I deal with roles and responsibilities? Complex. And a lot of organizations make use of outsourcers or hosting parties or IT goes across the organizational boundaries. And you need to get this in place across your organization and across the organization's boundaries. Very interesting. And that shows um, you understand that uh, companies might struggle with this. This is a bit of an eye chart for the people in the back, but it allows you, if you get your act together in these so-called key process areas, if you are able to define your processes, procedures, your roles and responsibilities and policies, it allows you to implement and uh, <coughs> realize these, these type of uh, 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 yeah, uh, processes. You see that they all are connected. So if you define a policy, it touches often more KPIs. Processes go across the KPAs. Examples of uh, uh, policies that an organization needs to work on. What type of policies are needed for acquisition, what is allowed, what's not allowed, what type of standards, how do we define standards, policies around data security, what is allowed, where can you store data, when do you need to make backups, etc., etc. Fender communication, how do we inform our vendors, educate our vendors, make sure that they are complying with what we think as an organization is important. Lost or stolen assets. People go on uh, it's more and more flexible. People work wherever they want and on which device they want, and they can be in hotel rooms or in cafes or whatever. And then their PC is stolen. Is there a policy in place, what you need to do? Call IT, yeah, my PC is stolen. But organizations from a security perspective, they need to have a policy in place. What to do when something is lost or stolen? How to reduce the, the potential risk that comes with that? Disposal or assets, very interesting, very interesting. Think about your organization. How do they get rid of their assets? 
Sometimes it's just put in a locker. Yeah, we don't use it anymore. We put it in a locker. And then after three months, someone, uh, some organization picks it up. And then what happens? What happens with the data? Are we sure it will be uh, uh, erased? Do we have a process in place that the hardware or the software that was attached or connected to that hardware piece is reused and bought, brought back in a pool? And if these policies or these procedures are not in place, organizations just buy um, software um, and they continue to buy software. Uh, a big uh, steel company, um, uh, multinational, we were talking about it yesterday with uh, the Dutch uh, subsidiary, uh, they expect that they spend worldwide, they have about 20,000 employees, that they per day they spend about 40, 40 50,000 euros uh, per day on just buying software without really understanding if it was needed because they don't have these these processes in place. Um, disposal of assets, very important, and number of policies. Of course, organization with 500 employees, 10,000, 100,000 employees, it, it, there are differences. But even an organization with, let's say, 200 employees, they still need to have all these KPAs in place, or at least think about it. Organization with 200 employees, they have 200 PCs, laptops, they dispose of it. You can't say, okay, there's only 200 employees, so they are allowed to make a mess of it and, 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 and uh, uh, don't obey to the, to the legislation and environmental rules. Even smaller companies need to have their act in place. Uh, standards, asset standards, terms and conditions. Think about terms and conditions. How can we leverage these much better when we do vendor management? Vendor standards, communication, education. Don't reinvent the wheel. That's actually what's, what's meant here. Think about what standards and you can read, you use them much easier. You don't have to uh, think of it anytime. Uh, what kind of standards? Do we have on, on total cost of ownership and ROI? Do we for every asset, if it's needed on an ad hoc basis, think, okay, what's the total cost of ownership? Or do we have a standard? This is how we define total cost of ownership for assets. And these are the assets that we want to do it. Every asset within an organization, our organization that is worth more than 1,000 uh, euros or 9,000 crowns, uh, we will track TCO and try to track uh, uh, ROI and uh, we do it in a certain stand in a standardized uh, way. So businesses, of course, business is business. We need to continue to be successful with business. Uh, but IT asset management can help organizations to run IT more as a business, if you know what I mean. Don't, there's a, the, the, the discussion, IT and business alignment, it's going on for, I think, uh, probably more than, more than three decades. Yeah, but IT doesn't support the business efficiently. IT doesn't understand the business. And I, I think it's still an issue. But through IT asset management, yeah, you can run IT more as a business. You can be more transparent to the business. What are the real costs? What is really needed? Can we have good discussions? How IT really supports the business? And of course, save costs. And what can you do with the cost? Well, you can add it, uh, the savings you can add to your uh, profit. Or you can be more innovative. There's more money. Um, <coughs> it, it's, it shows from statistics that, um, I think it's Accenture that did math and uh, that research that, 70, 70, 80 percent of IT budgets are spent on keeping the lights on. In other words, if an IT budget is 100 percent, then about 70, 80 percent of that IT budget is spent by organization on just maintaining their current state. So there are only 20 percent out of that IT uh, budget available for innovation. So what if we 
could reduce through IT asset management, really understand what's needed, what are the costs. If we can reduce it through standardization, big cost saver, to allow organizations to be more innovative or make more profits. That's the promise. <coughs> A stable business backbone, sustainable, sustainable, stable business backbone. Uh, and executives are more demanding. Uh, if our organization, if we try to sell something, we can be very enthusiastic about it. And even the people that we talk in an organization, they can say, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But more and more, and uh, let's say we are living in crazy business times, and organizations, they need to prioritize what are they going to do with their money? Where are they going to invest? There is always someone in an organization that will say, why should we spend this money? Why should we spend one million crowns on this project? What will be the tangible benefit that I can have as an organization? And that's aligned with this. You need, as an IT organization, you need to be more transparent. You really need to understand and demonstrate this is what it costs, this will be the benefit, this will be uh, the way that it will support your business. So ITEM is the foundation for the road to technology infrastructure success, which clearly correlates to being successful in business. Uh, what we see is that uh, it's quite a challenge, so it's, uh, it's difficult to, to get it flying or it takes some restarts. Um, and and the, the main reasons for that is that uh, item is understaffed. So people do their utmost best, but an organization with 5,000 employees and one person needs to do IT asset management, that will not be a success. So again, the, the business case for investment here needs to be clear. Uh, people are badly uh, um, or, or educated limitedly. Um, they don't have the, 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 the knowledge Lack of executive support, so then people, they really get it, but they're frustrated. They're also in the organization, uh, with all due respect, but lower in the hierarchy in an organization. Um, and that leads then that other organization and departments think, yeah, hello, uh, I understand, but uh, I'm busy. So this, in order to make IT asset management a success, software asset management, hardware asset management, it needs to have executive support and not just I will send out an email as an executive sponsor, someone really at the top of the organization, a CFO, uh, CXO level that understands this is important for our organization. We need to commit to this uh, and it can relate to governance, that is, uh, can be a big driver. It can relate to risk, to, to cost optimization, but there needs to be um, uh, high-level executive um, uh, commitment. And the other thing is that, I think it's on this uh, slide, uh, an IT asset manager must understand both technology and the business, be a salesperson, be a marketing person, analytical, and a leader. That's why I, I like that. That's why I like the area of IT asset management. You're a spider in the web. But in order for organizations to be successful, they also need to appoint a person responsible for the item program that is a leader, that knows how to sell things internally, that is credible, that is a trustworthy advisor in your organization. And trust comes with uh, uh, knowledge, but also the intent that you bring that knowledge across. Someone must own the item program and have authority to make changes, because some changes might not be uh, uh, popular. If you ever have worked with, uh, um, with uh, hospitals, people that don't want to adhere to standards that have been agreed upon, doctors. Doctors don't like standards. So you need to have a, you need to have a policy how to deal with non-standards. But also executives, they have uh, 
they don't like they don't like standards. They want to have the, the latest and greatest. Think about BlackBerry. What was it? 15, 10, 15 years ago? BlackBerry. Everyone was BlackBerry. IT had to deal with the Blackberries. iPad. Uh, it's iPad. Can I can I connect it to my exchange environment? Yes, but it's not a standard. Yes, but I want it. <laughs> so you need to have uh, your act together, but a, a leader uh, needs to be in place there. Technology data needs to be accurate. Not even 100%. So 90, 95 would be great. All parties, all departments, it goes across the organization. Um, and yeah, it's the foundation that one had. So recommendations. If you are an organization and you think, okay, this could make sense. Um, if you're back uh, back in uh, at work on uh, what is it Monday, uh, and maybe you are aware, but check if there's an item program in your organization, um, and everyone is engaged, and you are working in IT environments. So um, engage with item team and 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 see how what it can do to you or what you can contribute to the item program. And if it's on a low level. Um, there's room for improvement. Discuss if uh, if there if it makes sense to 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 explore what would it mean for your organization uh, and an, an assessment or risk and reward analysis uh, could make sense. An assessment you go through, you take your organization, you benchmark your organization to these twelve key process areas that I that I mentioned. How are you doing? on acquisition management, on policy management, on vendor management. And then you can score and you can think, okay, here is this is our current state. What would make sense for us as an organization to uh, to start working on? Uh, what would be the, the cost savings, the, the efficiency improvements, risk reduction? So short short term actions, mid term actions and, and what what would be uh, possible on the longer term. Um, <coughs> So, having said that, then I didn't send the last PowerPoint edition to my Hotmail account because now there was a slide with a question mark. I added that yesterday. So, there's now a slide with a question mark. So, we do have some, uh, some time uh, for, for questions or comments or concerns. Um, anyone? Does it make sense for an organization to invest in IT asset management? Show, okay, show hands. I didn't see all hands, so some people might, <laughs> might not agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank companies have uh, software asset management, one sort of. Yeah. Uh, but uh, how can we get started on hardware asset management? Do you have any, like, yeah. uh, step by step? Yeah, it, uh, probably th there are already a lot of things going on when it comes to hardware assets. So it's uh, the first step could be what are the activities done already and how can we bring that into and align this that with the stuff that we are doing in the software asset management area. That's a very simple answer, but it's probably start with the current state and see what uh, what could be the first st step to align because it needs to be connected and maybe probably in your organization it's already tracked what software is running on which hardware, but you can get much more out of it if you start working and considering these 12 key process areas that touch also the hardware assets. Does that answer your question? Okay. More questions? There's a microphone. So. No? Have I been so clear? Good. I think that's uh, that's it. And thank you for your time. Uh, feel free to... Uh, reach out to me. I didn't have my email address, but uh, you can see on the agenda and on the uh, my name and you 
pretty sure in this digitized uh, economy that you will find me. Thank you for your time.